Hello everyone, welcome to another CSS tutorial. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at CSS drop down navigation menus. So on the right side of your screen you'll see that there is a sample navigation with five links and if we hover over the about link we see that a drop down appears and then it has its own set of links. So the goal for today's video is for you to understand the underlying HTML structure of this navigation menu and then also I will show you the CSS needed to style the menu accordingly. So let's dive right in. Now this was actually the finished product that we see, but that doesn't really help you to understand how to put it together, how to create this on your own. So our first step will actually be to delete this content so we can start from square one. So now we see if we refresh that we have an empty page. So from here you can try to follow along. Our first step to create the HTML structure of the navigation will be to simply create a div with an ID of nav. You can actually give it an ID of anything you prefer, uh, but if you would like to follow along, then just go ahead and name it nav. So inside this div, we're going to create an unordered list. And then inside this unordered list, we're going to create list items. And then inside the list item, we'll create a hyperlink. Close the hyperlink. So now if we refresh, we see that we have a home link. So now let's go ahead and just create a few other sample links to fill out the navigation a bit. So home, about, oops, lessons, oops, blog, videos. So now if we refresh, we see that we have our five links. Um, from here, before we worry about adding a second layer of links, let's actually go ahead and try to understand the CSS necessary to just create a basic horizontal based navigation. So let's hop over to our style sheet and begin styling our navigation. As you can see, I have a bit of code in this style sheet, but nothing directly related to the navigation. So we are starting from square one. Uh, just to review, I do have a few rules which are removing the padding and margin from the HTML and body elements. And then I also have uh, a clear fix code that I will include in the description so you can copy and paste it into your style sheet. <clears throat> but for now, let's start from square one. So we're going to start creating our navigation rules. Our first step will be to take this navigation and instead of it being a vertical list, we want it to be uh, a horizontal list. We were going to use the float property to achieve that. So our first rule will target the list items and tell them to float. So div nav unordered list list item that's our selector and then we're going to tell them to float to the left and we also want to remove their bullets so list style none. If we refresh we see that our navigation is now sitting horizontally. However the links could definitely use a bit of horizontal spacing so let's create a new CSS rule targeting the links and apply a bit of padding. So our selector will be div nav unordered list list item hyperlink padding. How about seven pixels vertical and 15 pixels horizontal? Let's also go ahead and make the links block level elements. So display block. I will go into the details of what this property means a bit later on in the video, but for now, let's just go ahead and apply this. If we refresh, we see that the links are now spaced out a bit. Great. Let's go ahead and add uh, the second level of links that will go under the about section. So if we hop over to our HTML, we see that here's the list item and the link for the about link. Inside the list item, we're going to create a new unordered list that is nestled inside this list item. So unordered list, and then obviously there will be list items inside this, and then hyperlinks inside of that. Uh, sample link one. Go ahead and duplicate this a few times. Whoops. Sample link two, sample link three, sample link four. Okay, so just a quick recap. So we already had our existing navigation inside about. So here's the, the beginning list item tag for about. 
and here is the closing uh, list item tag for about. Inside that, we created a new unordered list, and then inside that, obviously, it has list items as well. So now if we refresh, we see that um, it is very chaotic. So our first step is to actually hide these sample links because we don't want them to display unless we are actually hovering over the about link. So we'll use CSS to achieve that. Let's hop back over to our style sheet, create a new rule. We are targeting second level unordered list items, right? So div nav unordered list unordered list. So let's quickly recap how the selector is going to work. It's going to look inside our nav item. Uh, inside that, it's going to look for an unordered list. And then it's going to look for any children unordered lists inside of this element. So it's going to find this second level unordered list. And these are the links that we want to hide until uh, the mouse hovers over this about link. So let's go back to our CSS. That means that we want to hide uh, this element, this selector. So I'll show you my preferred method for doing that. Position absolute left negative 999 EM. So if we refresh, we see that we're back to normal. The about sample links are hidden. And next up, we just want a way so that if we hover over this, they will then be uh, displayed. Just a quick note, um, you might be a bit weary of uh, this code. It might look a bit like a hack or unconventional, but trust me, this is actually an industry standard for dropdowns and hiding certain elements. It has to do with accessibility. So our other option would have been to um, use display none instead of these two lines of code. Uh, see if I refresh, it achieves the same thing. However, um, this is going to hide the content in certain screen readers for people who are visu uh, visually impaired. So we don't need to get into the details of that for now, but just know um, that these two lines of code are perfectly okay. They're an industry standard. So moving on, we now need a way to unhide or display our dropdown content once we actually hover over one of the links. So we're going to create a new CSS rule that is quite similar to the rule we just used to hide uh, that unordered list. Div nav unordered list list item hover unordered list. So we're using the pseudo selector of hover and we're saying drill into our nav, find an owner list. If we hover over one of our top level links, the list items, then select any unordered list inside of that only if we're hovering. And at this point, we just want to negate this property. So we'll say left auto. So this is going to cancel out this negative value. So the links will no longer be uh, pushed to the side by 900, uh, negative 999 EMs. They are just going to sit where they would naturally flow. So if we refresh and we hover over the about, we see that there they are. Now they're not positioned uh, exactly where we want them. We'd probably want to remove this extra spacing right here. However, with just these few lines of code, we now have the hover functionality in place. Now we're not going to have time in this video to cover all of the styling details as far as colors and background colors and borders. Uh, but let's just do a few quick edits before we close out this video. We want to remove this extra spacing and we want to make these sit vertically. So we'll create a new rule. So this will remove all of the extra spacing to the side of the nav. And then we also want these links and the drop down to sit vertically. So we're selecting second level list items and we don't want them to float. So now they will sit vertically because they're not floated to the left. So that's gonna wrap up this video. I will create a part two because in part two, we still need to cover um, a bit of the styling as far as colors and positioning. And I also need to point out in the second video that this dropdown technique will not work in older versions of Internet Explorer. However, there is a method or a JavaScript solution out there called Son of Suckerfish, and it will get this to work in older versions of Internet Explorer. So we'll check that out in part two. I hope you guys feel like you learned something, and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.